Right. Hello, everyone. And good afternoon. Welcome to Art Conversation. I'm honored and so excited to introduce our today artist, Heather Bettler. Heather, welcome to our conversation. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you for accepting to uh, be our guest today. Um, all right. So Heather, please start with telling us who you are, um, what are you doing, and how you became interested in art. Okay. Well, once again, I'm Heather. I'm a Boston artist. And right now, most of the work I've been working on is vibrant abstract paintings that are based on interconnectivity and spirituality. And it is quite a journey how I got here because my background is actually in drawing and fibers. I grew up, uh, grew up in Fort Collins, Colorado. And so I went to college in my hometown, which is Colorado State University. And I had been through a couple years of school. Art was all I ever loved to do from the time I was a little kid. I was just always lost, doodling, making little things you know, did a lot of art in uh, college, in high school. And then I was kind of at the point in college where they require you to um, declare a major. And I hadn't declared a major yet because I was kind of like, do I have the confidence to just say, I'm going to go to art school. And my backup was kind of thinking, well, maybe I'll go to school and play it safe and be a psychologist. And it was the day before I was supposed to register. And I just asked the universe to show me a sign before I'm supposed to register at 8 a.m. of what path I'm supposed to choose. And I had a few paintings up at this coffee shop, and this is like the late 90s. And that evening, I sold a painting from this coffee shop for $500, which, you know, as a young teenager at the time, that was like a huge big sale. And I felt like, well, that's my sign. So the next day, I registered <laughs> to be an art major, and the rest is history. I've just been enjoying it ever since. Oh. Great. So what type of art you most identify with? Are you doing any fiber still? I haven't probably since the early 2000s. That was the last bit of more fibers, multimedia stuff that I did. Um, I definitely really miss that. It's a bit more hard to do if you don't have access. Like if I had access to a big, you know, eight harness loom and big water stations to make paper. I mean, there are things I could modify to make. Um, but just, you know, once I got into the painting, I've been kind of on that path now for five or six years. So just been enjoying that. So what type of art you are more known with? Uh, for my work, I was really known for doing, um, the figurative drawings that I did for about 15 years. Right. And, you know, now it's the very vibrant abstract paintings that are more in my studio and that I've been showing for quite a while now. Mm -hmm. So um, how has your work changed over the time? Is it, um, you know, uh, this is something since, I know you said you did fiber and after that now you're doing abstract. Is it uh, abstract is something you used to do from beginning? Or? No, that is actually something that's uh, brand new for me. Okay. Um, so my background in figurative drawing, I did that for about 15 years and I, I really love drawing. It is definitely my first love. I love expressive making. I love working in multiples. I love focusing on color patterns and repetition. So I did that for about 15 years, um, showed quite a bit. People really loved them. And then oddly, I just kind of started uh, struggling with my drawings where I had weirdly kind of lost what I love about it, which I love the expressive mark making in the drawings. And I'm not really sure what happened, but I started to become very rigid and the drawings just lost whatever made them cool. And so at the time I was studying the Buddhist sutras and um, just getting into Reiki. And so the very last bit of drawings that I did was I had done um, some Buddha drawings on canvas. And there's kind of a few things that were happening all at once. But while I was doing that and struggling with the drawings and doing my last bit of drawings of the Buddhas, some of my friends said, you know, you're really struggling with drawing, but the backgrounds that you're painting on top of are really cool. Why don't you try painting for a while? And I was a bit like, I don't really have a background in painting. I haven't painted since high school, but I'll give it a shot. And then I just was kind of like learning as I go. And well, maybe that's the great thing about not being trained as a painter 
is that I can just forge my own path. I don't know what's right or what's wrong. I've definitely made some mistakes along the way where the acrylic came right off the canvas, but you know, just learning as I go and finding, it was a great way also for me to integrate my uh, spiritual beliefs about interconnectivity into my work. And so I kind of merged that all together with the painting series. Yeah. Uh, since you talk about the spirituality, in your statement, you mentioned something about life inspiration. And you said um, most of your work inspired from your life. Would you uh, tell us about your inspiration? Um, what and what aspect of life kind of inspire you um, to paint? Right. So when I was doing the drawings, there was uh, also with the figurative work, there was also a lot of self-portraits. So those self-portraits actually on the um, showers, the gallery show, that's not all the uh, multiple pieces together. You can kind of see those are some self-portraits. I used to wear glasses before I got LASIK. Uh, so those pieces were a lot about me and what's going on with me. And then I did do some uh, fiber work in the early 2000s. And so that was also kind of talking about what was happening in my life. So I had a um, kind of good uh, bride, bad bride series um, that was basically at the time of me being a gay person, gay marriage wasn't legal yet in the United States, wasn't federally legal. So a lot of my work was about that, about, you know, um, we're being sold as women that once you have your beautiful white wedding, everything will be great. And that just wasn't going to be an option for me. And so I also did a lot of stuff about women and socialization about, you know, wearing makeup and women in the home. So they were more um, timely pieces and things that were important to me. Mm -hmm. And then when I switched to the abstract painting and I was thinking, how do I integrate my spirituality into this? Um, tying in the interconnectivity with the Buddhism, and I'm also a Reiki level one healer. So when I decided to integrate all that, my new process has been to start each piece with a meditation. And then I practice Reiki on myself and the canvas. And then I pretty much just ask the universe to help me make something that is beautiful and meaningful for someone else. And then what's great about that is it's very easy then for my brain to click into the flow where, you know, it's like you, as an artist, you kind of lose track of time and space. But you, it's like the back of your brain is also thinking about building composition, color. How do we keep our eye on the canvas? So I just love once you get into the flow. And it always seems like no matter what kind of piece I say I'm going to do, I could come in and say, you know what? I've been doing a lot of blue. I'm kind of feeling aggressive. I want to do a bright red piece. And then it never fails. I finish and the piece is blue and purple. And I, I don't know what happened. But that's some of like thinking about the composition in your head and sometimes just happy accidents. Yeah. So uh, do you have a concept in your mind when you start something um, and then uh, you go through that concept or you have a concept and you change? How, how you do, how you start um, a, a piece, how you start to do your work? Yeah. I would say it's pretty wide open. Um, just whatever I feel like in the moment. And there are some times that I do really feel like I want to build a lot of layers and I want to scrape away paint and I want to be very aggressive with the work. And then the next time I come in and I'm like, oh, I just want soft, neutral colors. Um, yeah, so it, it just really varies. Okay. So, um, but, but you have something in your mind or like, you know, some image in your mind, which is based on that you start and then, then let it uh, let it flow, right? The rest right. of right. I, I mean, sometimes it's like I want to build up the layers, scrape them down. The next time it'll be about a very specific piece, and like one that's on the slide, Manhattan Beach Pier. That was about a very specific memory of one of my best friends and I getting ice cream and watching the sunset from Manhattan Beach Pier. So sometimes there are things that, even though they're very abstract, they're about a certain memory or certain experience or something that I wanna get out. And then there are some that are just, happen so quickly <laughs> that it was just such great happy accidents that, you know, sometimes people always ask how long do you work on a piece? And it's hard to say from start to finish with varnishing and framing and waiting for everything to dry. You know, it's sometimes you work on things for weeks and weeks and weeks. And then the next time I come into the studio, it could be 20 minutes. And I'm like, I think it's done. So, yeah. That's so, like um, okay. Job. You, uh, please walk us through some of your artwork. I mean, I just walk past, uh, walk by some of them. Like for example, this fiber and multimedia. And then um, let's, let's talk about some of your work and some of the categories of work you have. Okay. So, yeah, so uh, 
this, these are uh, some example of your fiber work. Would you explain some of this, um, you know, your fiber work and what are these, you know, pieces about and, you know, what media you use? Okay, uh, I'll start with the two pieces that are the beaded uh, makeup bags. When I was in college, I had done um, quite a few drawings. Um, and then there's a series of the baby blankets also that were uh, from college. So I took those drawings from college that were more about um, the socialization of women. And so the kind of the series of the piece and of, of the drawings going to the beaded makeup bags and then going to the baby blankets was just about how I felt I was socialized to believe that um, makeup will make me beautiful. So then as a young person, let's say 15 or 14, 16, whatever, you start wearing makeup, and then you start to feel like, I'm only beautiful when I wear makeup. So the whole kind of piece was, I was taught to wear makeup, I started wearing makeup, I then felt like I needed to be beautiful to wear makeup, and the end piece was, I still wear lipstick. So it's like, I know all of this as a feminist, that I'm being socialized to you know, basically be a peacock, but you know, I, I realize this, so those were kind of some of the series starting from the drawings and kind of continuing. And then like I talked about before uh, with the wedding dress, I had done a bunch of photos before I destroyed the wedding dress. I'd done a bunch of photos of me in the wedding dress where it was basically essentially my only option I thought at the time was as a lesbian was going to be, uh, most of the piece was about me not being able to be married. So it was images of me marrying myself tied into all the wedding pieces. And I've kind of continued on that, I had a, um, I was in a group show in San Francisco called Glitter Bomb. That was just a LBGTQ plus show. So I also had a similar piece to that. And then I have a third project I would like to do with the wedding dresses. I have the idea, I've written the proposals, I'm trying to pitch it to get grant money for it. So that would kind of be the conclusion of the wedding dress pieces. Wow, very interesting. Very, I, I would love to see that. I really yeah, so I hope, I Really, like a, my final project, it would be a big, big project, but I'm really hopeful I can get funding for it. Definitely, you have to share it with us. Yes, um, I will. <laughs> All right, so these are some of your drawing, right? This Buddha. Um... Right, that was the last bit of drawings that I did with some of the Buddhas on canvas before I switched to painting. Right. And um, okay, uh, let's um, also talk about your um, abstract world. What what media are this? Uh, so my paintings are all acrylic, and then the example that you have up there, um, cascading blue, those are uh, acrylic with resin on wood panel. Right. So are these also each um, you know expressing your life or like you know different aspect of life? Um, what, are, what are your abstract painting about? Yeah, I would say that, you know, there can be about many different things. They could be about what's going on. They can be about the excitement of a new relationship. They could be, you know, sadness from the pandemic and what's going on. Um, but I just start each piece trying to think what is something that could be meaningful and impactful for someone else. Mm -hmm. And that's why I say going in the flow afterwards. Sometimes at the end, I'm always surprised, like, oh, I mixed up all this phthalo blue and I, I didn't use it. So, so I, sometimes I think the paintings are just willing themselves into ex existence and it's like I'm the vessel alone for the ride. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's, that's really true. So I, how long it takes, what's the process when you do something like this? Uh, well, that piece, um, I had spent a summer at my parents' house and, um, my parents hadn't finished the basement yet, so it was gonna be a great space to work. And at the time, my dad was shutting down his uh, construction business after 45 years. So because he had a lot of um, commercial real estate that he had paint and wood and all these projects, all these things that were gonna get thrown away, I was like, I'll take it. So um, that was just basically, I was doing a lot of experimentation. I was at my parents, just like working in the basement every day, listening to music. Um, but I guess more so my process now with the abstract paintings, now that I'm in the studio, you know, it's just to start each piece with about like a 15 minute meditation, um, practicing Reiki and then just having fun. And, and you know, at the beginning of the pandemic, it, it was not quite like that. Like the work when I came in at the beginning of the pandemic was very, very aggressive and didn't really fit in with the rest of my body of work. So I just put those aside because I feel like it, as artists, you know, there might be times that we really need to get things out. And so I got all that out and then just put the canvas to the side. Mm -hmm. 
So, um, so you meditate, right? I mean, you I literally sit in your studio and meditate before you start to just calm yourself and then... Yeah, I do, I'll just ideas. for 15 minutes. Sometimes I'll just do a guided meditation. Sometimes I'll just sit and, you know, work on breathing. Just helps me get into the mental space. Yeah, wow, so interesting. I wish I had that time and um, actually opportunity. To meditate some, <laughs> calm ourselves, right? All of us, we need that. Even 15 minutes a day is great. Yeah. Uh, these are very interesting. What are these two uh, pieces are about? Uh, well, those are two of my favorite pieces. Um, I think those are about from 2015. I was doing a lot of painting at that point. I had just gotten an amazing new studio here in Boston. Um, so Divinity uh, is one of my favorites. Uh, there was actually a painting that was underneath that one and it was just terrible. It was like I had just ruined the canvas and so the next day I came in because I always like to do little test pieces or if I feel like I ruined a canvas and I don't like it, I'll kind of use that to kind of do the test pieces just see what I want to do next. So when I came in the studio the next day I was like man I ruined this canvas I'm just gonna goof around today and have fun. And I think there was something about in that freedom of not having any attachment to the outcome, which also ties into Buddhism and not being not attached. So I didn't have any attachment to the canvas, the outcome, what it was going to look like. And then, of course, it became my favorite painting. Yeah. It, I, I, when I saw it be, before uh, seeing the title, I thought this was like, you know, some wave or, you know, um, ocean, you know, because that's um, <laughs> more look like a wave, you know. Right, uh, a lot particular of the divinity, and it completely makes sense for the title you um, you choose for that divinity, because divinity itself has many layer and layer and layer, and more, um, and it's more about emotion. Right, absolutely. So, yeah, it just, so it definitely uh, makes sense in that sense. And um, how about this this piece, origins? What's the oh, story I of origins? Uh, well, I done quite a bit, a few in that series. I just kind of love the color combinations. And those were really fun where I was laying down a lot of paint layers, a lot of gel mediums, just having a lot of fun and then scraping them back away, which how fulfilling is that for an artist to take paint off the canvas? It's just, it's really fun. So, so I'm uh, sorry, um, which layer is first? I mean, uh, the, the layer you carve away, um, is that that orange one or green uh, or green and bluish one? It's more the blue that I'm taking away. Okay, you blued it. Okay. So, and um, is it, you let, you let it dry and then you, uh, you took away or carved some, some of the layer? Yeah, the first few layers I'm just kind of building, letting them dry over a few days. And that final day I come into work from it, I'm, paint, I'm making sure, you know, everything stays wet so I can drag the paint off the canvas. Why do you call it Origins? Oh, that's a good one. I'm trying to remember. I think I'm because original uh, pieces that I had done in that series, there was one large one. Uh, that was called Jupiter. And so then I decided to name the rest of the pieces uh, Europa, Io, Callisto. So the moons of Jupiter. So those were named the moons of Jupiter. And then I had this kind of bigger piece that was one of the last ones. And I was just like, well, if we're going to start, you know, with Jupiter and moons forming and, you know, whatever's out there in the universe, why not call it the origins? Like, how yeah. do we get universe, you know, all the planets next to us? Yes, yeah, it's, uh, it makes sense. Um, I think this is a short video I have of you uh, doing one of your pieces, right? Um, yes. Let me just play that. Into the light. So, uh, in, in what you're trying to achieve in this series, Into the Light, which we saw a short clip of it. Right. So, my proposal had been that since most of my artwork is based on spirituality and connectivity, I usually have as much time as I want to meditate, 
really connect with the peace and kind of get in that tranquil mind state, that meditative mind state that's important to my work. So my proposal for these pieces was that, you know, resin, even though they say the pot life is pretty long, it's like you really have, I found 15, 20 minutes before you cannot really use the resin. It just becomes a sticky mess. So my whole proposal was in that short period of time, can I get into a meditative space to make artwork that still is align, aligning with my spiritual work. So is this, uh, this piece are uh, first you paint, then you um, kind of varnish it or seal it with resin or the color mix with resin? I'm doing a little bit of both. I'm usually laying down some colors and then I'll tint the resin at the end. There also are times that I just 100% complete the painting and just do a clear coat of resin on top. For that, um, how long it takes? You have to let it dry and then, you know, cover, seal it kind of with the resin, right? To get right. shiny. Acrylic. Yeah, in a, you know, if it's acrylic, you want the acrylic 100% to dry because you don't want air bubbles coming up into your resin and making it cloudy. So I think, you know, sometimes as an artist, there is a lot of waiting, which is why probably so many of us have projects in different phases, right? You're doing the underpainting, you're doing the painting, you're letting them dry, you're varnishing them, you're framing them. Yeah, if you have the space, yeah, I'm sure. The artists who have like the space, they do that, right? <laughs> like me all over the house. So Yeah, yeah like no. you can't even walk on the floor of my studio. It takes me quite a bit to clean it up for like spring open studios, first Fridays, all that, because usually you can't walk at all. <laughs> yeah, you know, that, that's, that's true about all artists. So right. if it's really neat, that means something wrong. So <laughs> every artist I, um, you know, talk or I saw their studio, they say, they complain about like, you know, how messy their studios are. And that's true. You know, right. you really, you have to mess it up in order to yeah. create something, you know? <laughs> yeah. That's, that's the, you know, job to being artist. Um, all right, so these are also uh, from the same series, Into the Light, right? Oh, well, that was a different series. Um, the series Into the Light was a series of five large scale resin paintings. And this was when I was talking a little bit before about the original work when I came in at the beginning of the pandemic was very, very aggressive. So I had put those canvases aside because they didn't fit in with my body of work and then a few months ago, I guess right before the end of the year, I had had a dream that I was supposed to take out those unfinished canvases and add violet and magenta. And I do not usually work in those colors, but I was like, I'm gonna go with it. And then at the time, all of our big storms in New England, which are nor'easters, were turning from snow to rain. So I decided just to do the series, very abstract of what it's like looking out at the Boston lights through the rain from my window. And I decided to title the series um, Driving Lessons with Mermaids, just because this series was started at the beginning of the pandemic and then ended last year. And I just thought there's, it's so fun with the vivid colors and the expressive mark making. And I just like the name Driving Lessons with Mermaids because I think it sums up all the craziness we've all been through last year, right? <laughs> it is, it is. And, and to be honest, bring some light into that, all those darkness, right? Sure. Right. Uh, we all need it, you know, we all need some more light and more color into our life. Right. And this is really, you know, it makes sense. And it kind of explain, I mean, when I see this and I saw the 2020 and I saw the darker color in the background and some light on top of it. So I just, right away, I, um, my mind went to 2020 and all those darkness, which is someone tried to shine some light and color into all those darkness, which is the other background, uh, all those craziness. So they are in background and light on top of them or color on top of them. So this completely actually makes sense and um, explain um, the feeling about 2020. Right, exactly. Or the visual 2020 <laughs> on the color, so. Uh, it's really interesting, I guess. Thank you. Good. Uh, okay, finding my roots. This is actually one of my favorite in your um, in your website. I have your website open too. I should um, briefly show that. So, would you explain about this finding finding my roots series and what this series is about? Yeah, I had done a series of trees before, um, maybe around twenty fifteen ish. And I just had been kind of thinking, I, I need to revisit that because during um, the pandemic, um, 
you know, at least here in Boston, we were very, very shut down. So you couldn't really go anywhere. So I would just take walks every day, take walks with other friends, like socially distanced walks. But I also found myself really trying to connect. So a lot of times when I would be out walking in the parks around Boston and stuff, I just would kind of pause and put my hand on the tree bark because I just feel like trees are so grounding, but yet they're reaching through the sky. They just symbolize so much. So I thought I'm going to revisit that series because I think coming into 2021, I like really want to reground myself, Yeah, you know? Now the pandemic hopefully things are getting better so it's time to you know like the picture says like find my roots get grounded there's a lot of a lot of like texture in these paintings so they're also really fun to do you said you said you have it some in your um studio um on your table can you can we see yeah. oh let me just stop sharing and um can see oh okay wow they're all large pretty large Pieces. And how many are in this uh, in this series? Uh, right now, I've done four new ones. Okay. Um, I'll probably do a few more. I might get some bigger canvases or maybe um, some more longer horizontal and try to do some more. But they just it was uh, I guess just really what I needed to start twenty twenty one on the right foot. <laughs> let's let's hope. Let's hope <laughs> right. <it wasn't> right. <laughs> we are like you know what March so crazy right and um what what media are those i didn't okay and, and i saw some kind of texture on you know on the surface of this what are these you kind of create the texture with uh with knife yeah so i was um coming and doing the background painting just doing a, like a layer of color and then coming back in and adding like a lot of gel medium just for all the texture and then come in painting, adding more color, adding a little bit um, more gel medium to build up some of the three dimensionality, like in the leaves. Yeah, and uh, yeah for, for some reason, I thought you, you try to carve into the canvas and you create those wavy shape into the- Oh, uh, different, you know, palette knives and different, like just, just ways to build up the paste. All right. Yeah, very interesting, very beautiful, thank you. And um, I also have your, um, let me just um, open your website for um, anyone want to see. I apologize. Um, I have your website here. So, um, nope. <laughs> All right, this is, um, I guess I have to share a screen in order to see your website. Um, this is Heather website if anyone would like to see. She has amazing artwork here and she has huge, like more than what we see in this PowerPoint. She has um, like a lot of artwork here if whoever would like to see uh, more of her work or get inspiration. So beside that, um, who are your biggest influence, Heather? Uh, do you mean in the art world or I in, just, yeah, you know, in, in your, in your artwork, in the artwork, uh, I would say, you know, I'm really influenced by the, uh, woman artists that came before me. I love Barbara Kruger, Eva Hayes, Anna Mendieta, of course, the Gorilla Girls, phenomenal. I'm also very fortunate that, you know, anytime I've been able to have studio space, I've also found like an amazing group of women artists. And I think, you know, just even having um that kind of you know bounce ideas off each other hey come see what i'm working on just kind of like maybe a, a you know a little bit of like a mentorship thing so i feel so fortunate that i have so many women artists in my life and i'm also very fortunate because my family and friends are so supportive yeah that's that's something really fortunate to have you know support and that's right we all need in especially like you know during this last year and this year at least this first few months in support right in friend and to be able to connect and stay connected so that's what all we wish for all right so we are almost at the end of our conversation and do you have any final word for our guest today Heather? yeah i mean just keep doing what you love keep painting i mean i think half the battle is just always showing up you know if we keep showing up in our studios keep working and 
anyone that follows me on social media know I talk a lot about supporting underrepresented artists, so supporting women artists like we're doing now, and also supporting artists of color. So I want to encourage people, you know, especially, you know, people are home, they're remodeling our condos, we just had Black History Month, we're on Women's History Month, so let's get out there and support underrepresented groups. Yeah, that's, that's true, supporting each other at least, right? That's yes. all we can do. Um, all right, so if um, anyone uh, like to reach out to Heather, um, this is her website and her information, and you can reach out to her through her website. And um, if you have any question for Nova, again, you can email us at nova.info.nova.com. And um, so thank you again for being with us with another conversation, and thank you very much, Heather for sharing your story and your artwork and your life. That was very amazing and inspiring. Thank you, it's my pleasure. I feel so honored, thank you. Thank you, pleasure is on.